for Europe, it just keeps getting worse. Nord Stream gas pipelines connecting Russia to Europe. Scientists recorded explosions in the Baltic Sea before detecting three simultaneous leaks. And this comes at a tipping point time for Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine. Russia's Nord Stream gas pipelines to Europe just blew up. And it might have been the US. If it was the US, we're getting real close to World War III. Let me explain. As you're watching this, these pipelines are spilling an insane amount of natural gas into the ocean, making it one of the greatest environmental disasters of recent times. But this disaster was no accident. These pipelines are made of steel nearly two inches thick, protected by another four inches of reinforced concrete. And as soon as the leaks were detected, Swedish officials reported two giant underwater explosions in that area, making this one of the biggest acts of sabotage of our time. The question is, who did it? If you listen to mainstream media, the answer is obvious. Putin did it. He's a madman. Who else would it be? NATO this morning calling those mysterious leaks in the Nord Stream pipelines sabotage. Sabotage is thought to be behind three leaks in the Nord Stream natural gas pipelines connecting Russia to Europe. He started off as a autocrat, became a dictator, and now he's a madman. Putin shot this door, suka. He wants zero chance of Europe ever getting Russian gas again. At first, that seems like the obvious answer. Even we assumed that it was probably Putin in a recent video. However, once you actually take a second to think about it, Putin blowing up his own pipeline literally makes no sense whatsoever. Natural gas is one of the main sources of Putin's wealth, of his power. Get this, Europe paid Russia 39 billion euros for energy in just the first two months of the Ukraine invasion. That is twice as much as the aid they gave Ukraine. And a lot of that was thanks to the Nord Stream pipeline. These pipelines were the last piece of leverage Putin had over Europe to get them to stop supporting Ukraine. He already shut off the pipelines. Why would he need to blow it up? Now, even if the EU wanted to come crawling back to Putin, begging for natural gas in exchange for giving Putin Ukraine, the EU wouldn't be able to because the pipeline has been blown up. But you know who would benefit from the Russian pipelines blowing up? America. Think about it, no pipeline means Putin has less power. It means he has a higher chance of losing in Ukraine. It means Europe has to go to another country that has a lot of natural gas to sell. A country like America. And the US knows this. In fact, here's what Biden had to say about Russia's gas pipelines back in February. If Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there will be uh, we there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. We will bring an end to it. And eight months later, an end has been brought to it. And right after the explosions, a former Polish foreign minister who's got a picture with him and Biden together on his Twitter banner tweeted out three simple cryptic words. Thank you, USA. That tweet has now been deleted. Oh, and what do you know? The day after the pipelines were sabotaged, would you look at that? A new pipeline was unveiled that carries non-Russian gas to Europe. How convenient, right? Man, imagine just how nice it would be to have your main competitor magically blow up the day before you launch your new business. Stay dangerous and this is the Nord Stream Sabotage. Behind closed doors, Poon might have been one of the wealthiest people in the world. He is basically the equivalent of a feudal lord during the medieval times. Lords were the wealthy, powerful elite that owned all the land back in the day. Think about it, Poon's got a ton of real estate. He has his own army of soldiers protecting him. You might as well call him Lord Putin. But lucky for you, you too can be called Lord whatever your name is, thanks to established titles. If you're not familiar with established titles, it allows you to buy approximately one square foot of land in Scotland for just under $50. And the thing about owning land in Scotland is that there's an old Scottish tradition where landowners are called lords and ladies. That means for just under $50, you can put that you're a lord on your credit cards, on your plane tickets, dating profiles, and more to show that you are above the peasantry. To be clear, this is not an official lordship, but it's still pretty cool. You're going to get a certificate. It will feature a unique plot number for your plot of land in Scotland. And if you act fast, you can actually get your plot of land near mine so we can be lords together. These make a super unique last minute GIF that would definitely set you apart from everyone else's mediocre GIFs. There's an exclusive sale going on for viewers of this channel where you'll get 10% off any purchase when you go to EstablishedTitles.com slash JakeTran and use code JakeTran. So pause the video and become a lord today by going to EstablishedTitles.com slash JakeTran and using code JakeTran with the link below. Thanks to Established Titles for sponsoring this video.
When looking at the Nord Stream pipeline sabotage, it's important to remember that America is no stranger to sabotaging other countries, launching coups, funding revolutions, sabotaging countries, toppling foreign leaders, launching psychological warfare campaigns on foreign populations is not the exception for the CIA, but the norm. It's such a norm that there's a giant Wikipedia page dedicated to all of it, and we've covered a bunch of examples of it on this channel. And the powers that be in America that orchestrate all these interventions have been very open about their intentions towards Russia and Russian natural gas. Mr. Putin. But to really understand just how far the U.S. is willing to go to cripple Russia, we have to go back in time to 2014 to the Ukrainian Revolution. In 2014, Ukraine was in an uproar. Just a few months before, the Ukrainian president at the time, Yanukovych, turned down a business deal with Europe when Russia made him a better offer. Protests on either side erupted all around the country and things got violent. Over a hundred protesters were dead by February, and would you look at that? It looks like the chaos was engineered, or at least supported by, none other than the US. And it makes sense. Why not meddle in Ukraine at this fragile time in their history to make sure they lean more towards the West? And it worked. Yanukovych ended up fleeing the country, and the new Ukrainian government that took power was pro-West. And that's where Condoleezza Rice comes in. Condoleezza Rice was America's national security advisor in 2001 and secretary of state under George W. Bush. So she's got a lot of experience with spreading democracy all over the world. In 2014, when all this upheaval was first happening in Ukraine, she openly admitted how the US wanted Europe to stop buying Russian natural gas and buy American natural gas instead. Uh, but now we need to have uh, tougher sanctions, and I'm afraid at some point this is going to probably have to invo involve oil and gas. Uh, the Russian economy is vulnerable. 80% of Russian exports are in oil, gas, and minerals. Uh, people say, well, the Europeans will run out of energy. Well, the Russians will run out of cash before the Europeans run out of energy. And I understand that it's uncomfortable uh, to have an effect on business ties in this way, uh, but this is one of the few instruments that we have. To, over the long run, you simply want to change the structure of energy dependence. You want to depend more on the North American energy platform, the tremendous bounty of oil and gas that we're finding in North North America. You want to have pipelines that don't go through Ukraine and Russia. So the U.S. was involved in the 2014 Ukraine revolution, and here we have America's national security advisor admitting that we know Russia's economy is dependent on natural gas, and that we want to change the structure of energy dependence in Europe. To have Europe depend more on the American energy platform that you want to have pipelines that don't go through Ukraine and Russia. Oh, interesting. There is not a pipeline that goes through Ukraine and Russia anymore. You simply want to change the structure of energy dependence. You want to have pipelines that don't go through Ukraine and Russia. But it doesn't stop there. This is Victoria Newland. She is also very well versed in the art of spreading democracy across the globe. She had power during the invasion of Afghanistan. She was a key player in the war on Iraq. She personally made the call to overthrow the Libyan government in 2011. Coups, proxy wars, aggression, ongoing occupations are all a part of her stellar resume. And you want to know what she said before Russia invaded Ukraine? If Russia invades Ukraine, one way or another, Nord Stream 2 will not move forward. It was like she was taking notes when Condoleezza Rice was talking. And as we mentioned earlier, the day after Nord Stream was sabotaged, a new pipeline called the Baltic Pipe was unveiled. This pipeline is not Russian and doesn't carry Russian natural gas. Instead, it was built by Norway, Poland, and Denmark starting back in 2013 and runs through around the same area as the Nord Stream pipelines did. On top of that, it was even finished a month ahead of schedule. Very convenient indeed. 
This means that Norway, Poland, and Denmark are getting the economic power that Russia once had. Even the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, said after the pipeline was destroyed that this was a huge victory for the US, even though it was absolutely something the US did not do. Quote, it's a tremendous opportunity to once and for all remove the dependence on Russian energy and thus take away from Vladimir Putin the weaponization of energy as a means of advancing his imperial designs." End quote. Ever since people started speculating if the US was involved in the sabotage, the US has been pushing back hard, saying that anyone who questions the narrative has been brainwashed by Russian propaganda. Sabotage at sea, that's what President Biden is calling the leaks and explosions on the Nord Stream pipelines. Russia is most likely behind this. The United States had nothing to do with it. That's just Russian propaganda and disinformation. But why the hard pushback? The reason is simple. It's because this is literally an act of war and because it might be true. Remember that colonial pipeline on the east coast of America that was hacked back in 2021? Remember how frightening that was for the US to have a critical part of their infrastructure compromised? Yeah, now imagine instead of hackers attacking the colonial pipeline, it was Russia. And instead of using ransomware, they used bombs. Yeah, that would be the start of World War III. That's why in this case, the US has to do everything in its power to distance itself from the Nord Stream sabotage. Because if word gets out that the US was involved somehow, why shouldn't Putin be able to sabotage America's infrastructure? Why shouldn't Putin be able to bomb our pipelines, attack our electricity grid, cut our internet cables? After all, it was America that started it. And then boom, America's proxy war against Russia now turns into a hot war. So far, common sense points to Putin not being the one who blew up the pipeline, and there's no direct evidence that the US was involved. But what do you think? I guess you have to ask yourself, if you were in Putin's shoes, would you blow up your own pipeline? Let us know in the comments below. Remember that long list of all the coups and regime changes the US has orchestrated? Well, there was one coup that started it all. This coup was so effective that at that time, it was one of the most successful CIA operations ever. But it was also the coup that planted the seeds of Middle Eastern terror. So many terror events, all the wars and chaos in the Middle East, they can all be traced back to this one coup that the CIA orchestrated. If you ask the government, they'll say it was to stop communism, to spread freedom, but in reality, it was for one thing and one thing only, oil. This was the coup that started America's love affair with Middle Eastern oil. We're talking about the Iran coup of 1953, and it was a bloodbath. Unfortunately, talking about terror events and tragedy and all the other stuff the CIA was having fun with would definitely get demonetized on YouTube. So we've released a private documentary on the Iranian coup and the roots of Middle Eastern terror, available only to members of this channel. Members have been loving it, and it's personally one of our favorite private documentaries. All you have to do to watch is scroll down and click that join button below. When you join, you'll get instant access to this private documentary, new ones coming out every single month, and access to all our previous documentaries as well like our newest one on the profitable business of vaccines. Everything that society will never teach you about how the world works. And there's a refund policy too, unlike most YouTube memberships. So if you join and you don't think it's worth it, email us within your first month of joining for the first time and we will personally refund you for your first month. After your first month, there is no refund. So scroll down and click that join button now. 
So who do you think did it? Let me know in the comments below. I talked to some international friends and the general consensus around the world seems to be that the US did it. But yeah, if you're new here, this is one of the biggest channels on YouTube for documentaries on money, power, war, and crime so that you can learn how the world really works instead of becoming a victim to it. So if you like that philosophy, if you want to be more dangerous, click that subscribe button below. It's free. You can unsubscribe whenever you want and you can leave me your best hate comments whenever you want as well so you have nothing to lose. You can follow me on Instagram at Jake Chen, but that is going to wrap it up. Thanks for being part of the Watch the End Club. Stay dangerous out there and I will see you guys in the next one.